Hello, this is Seher from Easy Peasy, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called as transport of protein into endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum is basically a kind of meal room in which proteins, lipid, carbohydrates, even ions can enter, and then they will go into the suborganelles from endoplasmic reticulum. Now this video is about protein. So we have two different type of proteins that are going to synthesize inside the cell. One type of protein is translated by free ribosomes present inside the cytosol. If that is the situation, then these proteins can enter nucleus, mitochondria, chroloplast, and peroxisome. The second type of translation is done by the ribosomes that are present on the surface of endoplasmic reticulum and they are going to translate the protein inside the endoplasmic reticulum. From there, the endoplasmic reticulum can transport this protein into plasma membrane, secretory vesicles, endosomes, and lysosomes. Now this picture is showing us that how they are going to transport this protein into different suborganelles. As you can see, this is the rough endoplasmic reticulum and these green dots are basically the ribosomes that are going to translate the protein inside the endoplasmic reticulum. From there, the protein will bud off from the endoplasmic reticulum and then they will transport it into the Golgi apparatus, lysosome, endosome, secretory vesicles, and even outside the cell. Now, we have two different types of endoplasmic reticulum. One is called as rough endoplasmic reticulum, and one is called as smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The difference between the two is that smooth endoplasmic reticulum doesn't have ribosomes attached with it, and they make and store lipids and steroids in them. Rough endoplasmic reticulum, on the other hand, are covered with ribosomes and their major function is to make and store proteins. Now, as you can see in this picture, these are the small and large subunits of the ribosome present inside the cytosol. If they are going to produce protein into the cytosol, then they can organize themselves and start translating that protein inside the cytosol. On the other hand, if this ribosome is going to translate this protein and that protein needs to enter the endoplasmic reticulum, then these ribosomal subunits will attach themselves with the membrane of endoplasmic reticulum and then they will start translating the protein. The protein that needs to enter the endoplasmic reticular membrane should have a signal that is going to target it to endoplasmic reticulum and that is called as endoplasmic reticulum signal sequence. The protein that is going to translate and transport inside the membrane simultaneously is called as co-translation modification. Now the protein that have the sequence have two different type of destination inside the endoplasmic reticulum. One is called as endoplasmic reticulum lumen and the other one is called as endoplasmic reticulum membrane. Let's take a look how it's going to transport this protein inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen first. Now, this is the endoplasmic reticular membrane and this is the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. Now, this is the translation machinery that is going to transport this protein inside the endoplasmic reticulum. This protein will have a sequence called a signal sequence. This signal sequence will be recognized by a protein called as SRP or signal recognition particle. This signal recognition particle will attach itself with the signal sequence and this is the step one for us. Now, this SRP is going to get recognized by a receptor present on the membrane of endoplasmic reticulum and this is called as SRP receptor. This is the step two that it is going to attach it with the SRP receptor. Now the step two will do a conformational change in the structure of translocon that is present on the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. And this protein will enter inside the translocon like this. Now, when the protein is going to enter inside the lumen, the signal peptidase is going to cleave the signal sequence and the rest of the protein will be present inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. Let's take a more closer look at this process so we can recognize that which type of translocon is present on the endoplasmic reticulum and how it is pulling this protein inside the lumen. Now, this is a beautiful picture showing us the details of that translocon present on the endoplasmic reticulum. 
Now this is the cytosol and this is the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. Now in this picture, this blue color bubble is representing the ribosome. And this is the protein that is coming out of this ribosome having the signal sequence here. This signal sequence is already recognized by SRP, that is the signal recognition particle. The SRP will get attached itself in the step 2 with SRP receptor. In this picture, as you can see, that SRP receptor have two domains. One is called as SR alpha and one is called as SR beta. SR alpha is going to recognize this SRP protein that is already attached with signal sequence. Now, with the attachment of SRP with SR alpha, they will produce a conformational change in the structure of translocon. The translocon that is present on endoplasmic reticulum is called as SEC complex. This SEC complex consists of SEC61, 62, 63 in ERG1 receptor proteins. SEC61C is the core domain of this SEC complex. Now in this picture, as you can see, that this protein from the ribosome is going to enter this core protein inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. Inside the lumen, we have a chaperone called as BIP. This chaperone is ATP dependent protein and it is going to pull the protein that is coming from the translocon of SEC61C. Now, once the signal sequence enters the endoplasmic reticulum lumen, the peptidase will cleave that part and BIP is going to attach itself with this protein by using energy from ATP molecule and is going to pull the protein from cytosol inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. This type of transport is also called as SRP and SR dependent protein transport. Once the protein is present in endoplasmic reticulum lumen, a lot of different conformational changes occur inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. That includes folding, assembly into multi subunit complexes, disulfide bond formation, glycosylation, that means the addition of sugar molecule on the protein, as you can see in this picture, and the addition of glycolipids to some of the proteins that is going to attach themselves with the plasma membrane. Now, these proteins, after having the post translation modification, will bud off from the endoplasmic reticulum to go into their sub-organelles. The second type of protein needs to enter the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. Now, in this picture, as you can see, this is a ribosome attached with messenger RNA and it is producing the protein that have the sequence called a signal sequence. Now, once the signal sequence enters the lumen, the peptidase is going to cleave that part. Now, this protein destination is the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. So, it will have another sequence that is going to get translated by this messenger RNA. And that sequence is called a stop transfer sequence. This sequence will be recognized by the translocon and it will shift this protein into the membrane like this. The rest of the protein will be translated inside the cytosol. Now, some of the proteins need to remain inside the endoplasmic reticulum, while others need to transfer into the other suborganelle. Now, the protein whose destination is endoplasmic reticulum should have the amino acid sequence called as KDEL. KDEL stands for lysine, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, and leucine. If the protein have this sequence, it means that this protein needs to remain inside the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, for example, this protein will bud off from endoplasmic reticulum into the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus receptors will recognize that this protein needs to remain inside the endoplasmic reticulum. So, their recycling receptors will bud off the protein that will go back into the endoplasmic reticulum. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please support our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.